Hello, boys and girls. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Tales of Wisdom. And you know what time it is. It's trade time, baby. We just did a whole lot of trade. Go check out my past trade videos. We got tons of them. Uh, we just did Vimalka. And that put a lot of buzz in the land. I'll tell you that right now. A lot of people didn't know what Vimalka was all about. Um, it was it was interesting, no doubt about it. You watch that, Vimalka, dude. He's going to be something extremely special. Today, though, we're looking at Bo Horvat again. Yes, that's right. Before the season started, I said Bo Horvat was going to be traded, and I did a trade video about it. And I got a lot of hate in the land for that from Vancouver fans. They're like, you know, why would they trade Bo Horvat? <coughs> blah, 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 blah. You can go check out that video. It tells you why I believe they would trade Bo Horvat after they signed in Miller. Anyways, here we are today, and it looks like almost for sure Bo Horvat is going to be moved. We're going to look at an article from the Hockey News. I could have given you probably a hundred articles on it, but I like this specific one from the Hockey News, so we're going to look at that. We're going to look at Vancouver and what they may get in or want in return. Um, we're going to look at Bo Horvat, and we're going to look at like eight teams. So this is going to be a long video. So get your popcorn out and uh, be ready for a long, awesome video that talks about all the teams that he could go to and the return that they may get. Remember. This is one take, no editing, and I just fly by the seat of my pants. So if you have any issues with the way I say things, do things, or whatever, comment in the comment section. That's fine. Most of the other guys, they edit all that their mistakes out. I don't. I'm fine with mistakes. It's all good. It's all part of the Steel Flyers All Sports Network. If you like all the sports in the land, and all the teams, or one of the teams of those sports, you'll like Steel Flyers All Sports Network. Okay, let's look here at the article in question. The Bo Horvat rumor mill continues to churn. That was this. This was just posted yesterday, which would be. The 27th of January. Um, the Vancouver Canucks shambolic coaching change early in the week. Yeah, that was horrible. <laughs> all of that was horrible. Uh, Rick Tockett finally hired and all of those sort of things like that. Um, the Canucks asking price for Horvat is three players, including a top prospect. Now, that can mean a lot of things. People, that's way too much. Well, it depends on what the other players are. It depends on what you consider a top prospect. See, Vancouver Canucks are going to put this out there, and if they get a prospect, they're going to want their fans to believe it's a top prospect, and I think it actually probably will be. Two really good players in the top prospect, uh, I'm not so sure about that. And here's the reason why. He also didn't believe he was allowing teams to talk contract with the pending free agent center. So this is for a rental. Yeah, they might be looking for two players and they might be looking for a top prospect. But we're talking about a rental here. So that kind of shades it down a tad if a team thinks that the, he's not going to sign they're not going to give all that much i mean it, they'll give first round pick in a prospect or a player or something like that if they're in a, in contention but if if they think they're getting two top players in a prospect for a for a guy that they can't even talk contract with 
they got another thing coming. But anyways, we'll continue. Um, he said a, a couple clubs. Some of these clubs I agree with, some I don't. I'm not going to get into that. We're going to look at the play, teams that I think make sense for the club uh, to trade to and make sense to trade to. Like, for instance, he said, they said New Jersey. New Jersey makes no sense at all. None. Uh, they already have centers. I can't see them doing that. Uh, we will be looking at Minnesota Wild. I can't see them giving up a, a whole crap load for a guy who is only going to be a rental. I don't think they think they're ready. So here's a hint. Those two teams are not in my eight teams. All right, let's look at what we got. Vancouver, what are they looking for? Quite simply, defense. If they're not looking for defense, with Horvat, <clears throat> then might as well just stop everything. Like, just don't do a damn thing. They're looking for defense. You have Quinn Hughes, top line defenseman, no doubt about that. Not very good defensively. Ethan Bear, at this moment, is playing on his right side. He's not a top <laughs> It's been, neither is Oliver Ekman Larson anymore or Luke Shen. Tyler Myers is finally getting played where he should be, which is a 5 6, and he's getting paid a hell of a lot more than that. This defense is absolutely diabolically horrible. Now, on the other hand, even if you trade Horvat, you've got Kuzmenko, Peterson, Besser. Miller, Garland, they got Joshua up here. I don't know uh, why that is. But you've got a good top six. And you still got Nils Hoglander and Vasily But Colson coming up forward is not a problem. If you got to trade a, a forward for a defenseman or more than one, you're still going to be fine. So they're going to be looking for a defenseman is what I'm trying to tell you. And draft picks and prospects and all that kind of stuff like that. So, let's look at Bo Horvat himself. Bo Horvat, 27 years old. He's going to be an unrestricted free agent. And uh, he is putting up career numbers, of course, this year. Apparently, they have talked contract with him, but... It is under what his performance was for this year. This is Rutherford's exact words. But over what he has been his whole career. And we will look at that. At this moment, he's paying 5.5. He's getting 5.5 million on the cap. Now, Vancouver could retain some of that, half of that, which would increase his value for sure. But looking at his numbers, he's got 54 points in, in 49 games and 31 goals. Career year on a contract year. Big red flag. Didn't seem to be a red flag for Vancouver when they signed JT Miller, but it is a red flag. By the way, Vancouver fans, if you're interested in what I'm saying here and you like talking trades and all of that, subscribe to my channel on YouTube. Um, you're going to have to actually go to YouTube, Perlo Wisdom, NHL, Perlo's NHL, Pearls of Wisdom on YouTube, and comment, tell me all about it down there in the land. But before that, he was, he was basically a 50-point player. 31 goals the last year he played. So teams coming up are going to be like, what is this guy? Is he the 52-point guy? Is the going for... 90 some point guy. I think most teams will look at he's somewhere in the middle. 70 point guy going forward. He's what 27 years old. He's hitting his prime. He's young. He's going to need a contract. Apparently, he's looking for about eight million dollars a year. So, all those things are going to be in consideration. And although right now they are not. Uh, 
Vancouver is not letting them talk contract with anybody, that doesn't mean it's going to stay that way. In fact, I doubt it will. So, first, I'm going to look at some rumored teams first. I got eight teams, so we got to go through a lot here. <clears throat> um, the rumored teams, for the most part, I don't think are teams that are going to be able to do this deal. So I have them lower on the list. This is basically starting from the least likely to the most likely, and we start with the Vegas Golden Knights. Now, <clears throat> the Vegas Golden Knights, why would Vegas be on here? They got Eichel, they got Carlson, they don't need a center. It's the Vegas Golden Knights, for the love of God. I mean, they will go after any player. And right now, they've sort of hit a wall right around just over the halfway mark. And I wouldn't, and this is a rumored deal. A lot of rumors about Vegas being interested in Horvat. So, what would go back in return in this deal? Do they have what it takes to give up what they need to give up to get a guy like Horvat? Well, they, they have a depleted, a fairly depleted prospect pool. There's not much here to be able to, except for Zach Dean. You know, they got a couple guys. Zach Dean I really like, but... And if you're going to get Horvat, maybe Zach Dean is part of the deal. But remember, they're looking for a defenseman. And therein lies the problem. They don't really have all that many defensemen that they can afford to give up if they're looking for a cup. They're not giving Shea Tador, Peter Angelo. Um, I, I doubt... Vancouver would be even interested in a McNabb or Martinez at their contract and how old they are. So you're probably going to look at Daniel Miramanov, 25-year-old defenseman that has showed pretty well in his time in the time that he has been in with Vegas. Big guy, right-hander. Vancouver is looking more about left, but at, the, at this point, I think they'd be happy with the right-hander. So you're looking at those two big prospects. And Vegas is right up to the cap. So a player is going to have to go back. And I think if you're going to grab Horvat, that player is Chandler Stevenson. He's making 2.7. If Vancouver retains he can play. He, he's like Chandler Stevenson is what? 28 years old. He's a good player. He's not as good as Horvat. If they really want Horvat it's going to cost Stevenson maybe Miramanoff Mira, Mira and a draft pick, something like that. So tell me what you think, Vegas fans. Would you take a 27-year-old kid who's had a 30-goal season, he's heading for an even bigger season this year, with upside for Chandler Stevenson, Miramanoff, and uh, do you have? Do they have their first-round pick this year? See, I remember I do this with no editing, right off the top of my head. So I don't have it all written down. 2024 first, say. I consider that deal. Tell me what you guys would think. I I, I think I I think Vegas fans love Chandler Stevenson, but if you're gonna pick up a center that's young with a lot of term, that's what you're gonna have to give up. Well, it will be a lot of term because I, I imagine they would have to sign him up here too. I, I don't know how they're going to do that. As a rental, maybe Stevenson and um, the defenseman, and that's it as a rental. I would have to consider that if I was Vancouver. Subscribe to my channel and let me know, Vegas fans, if you would be into something like that. Next, New York Islanders. They're rumored every time there's a forward available. Um, 
I have them second here because I do think that they would be very interested. The problem is I don't think they have enough to get it done. Simple as that. He's, I think Lamorella would do a lot to get him in here. And, you, and Islanders fans are like, we don't need anything up the middle. We got Barzo. We got Brock Nelson. Nelson can play the freaking wing. Really, that's what you do. Put Bavillier to the right. Put Nelson on the wing. Get Horvat. You need scoring. He's scoring a lot. Uh, I mean, everybody that I talk to in Islanders land says, we need scoring. Well, I'll tell you what. This roster is going to be very hard to get a player of Horvat's level to add to it. Very hard. I don't even know if it, there is enough here <clears throat> to be able to do it. It's going to cost the 2023 first, which they do have, right? Yes. It's going to cost that right off the get-go. And I also don't think Lamorello does this unless he's got a contract in his pocket. He, I doubt he does this for a rental. But it's going to cost that first. And you're going to have to find a defenseman to give up, which I imagine would be somebody like Sebastian Ajo. And uh, maybe Anthony Bavillier with a contract. And that would be a tough thing for the Islanders to absorb. They don't really have all that much depth in their lineup. But if you're going to compete with everybody else out here, that's kind of what you got to give up. So Islanders fans, would you do that or not? Now, remember, when I ask you this, I hear from Islanders fans that Lamorello doesn't do anything. We need help. We need to do this. Well, you got to give something up to get something, and you're going to have to give up a lot to get Horvath. So you're going to have to give a lo up a lot to get a lot of players out there that I hear that they think that fans want the Islanders to get. You're going to have to give up a lot. If you don't want to give up a lot, then you keep your team the way it is. It's just the way it is. Subscribe to my channel. Let me know if you would do something like that for Bo Horvat, especially if he signed. Next, Boston Bruins. Biggest rumor in the land. Boston Bruins are all over this, apparently. So I have them higher on the list because the rumors are so strong. I've heard it from so many sources. <clears throat> These are not my personal sources, of course. Just different avenues of, of media, uh, on TV, and everything. They're, go they're, they're interested in Horvat. Okay, what are you giving up? I don't think they're taking Charlie Coyle. Boston doesn't have hardly any cap space whatsoever. I think if you're going to do this, Craig Smith or Coyle, Coyle would almost assuredly have to be part of the deal. Now for Vancouver, Coyle at $5 million until 2026 is doing you a favor. I mean, I like Coyle as a player, but is he worth $5 million until he's until 2026? Nay, nay. Not even close. So they're doing you a favor. Now you're just basically going to have to throw in every prospect that you have, <laughs> I would say. First of all, they're looking for defensemen, and defensemen that can play now or soon. So you better hope they like Jacob Zaboral. I doubt they do, since Boston doesn't seem to like him all that much. That's probably not going to do it. Um, Jack Akin. <clears throat> Fabian Lizell. You can throw everything at the board you can get. Yeah, Fabian Lizell. You're like, well, I don't want to give up Fabian Lizell. Well, then you don't want Horvat. That's 
how it is. That's how it's going to be. You are going to, if you look at all the teams here and what they're able to give up, and you're not willing to give up like a Lizell, you're not getting them right now. So Boston fans, I struggle with this. Big rumor, they need defensemen. What are you giving up? Tell me in the comment section. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Let me know what you think Boston could give up to them. Remember, it's got to be a really good package. You can't just look at your team and go, well, we don't need this guy and we don't need that guy, so we're going to send him off. You're not getting hold of doing that. It's going to hurt. You're going to be like, I don't want to give up that guy. It's going to hurt. And I can't even find anything in here that makes sense, to tell you the honest truth. So, next. The final rumored team. The rest of the teams after this, well, no. There's one that's rumored. Um, but I also think it's very likely. This is a big rumored team. Seattle is going after Horvat. So, if you go back to the original thing, they're looking for two players and a top prospect. What the rumor is, is they're offering Shane Wright for Bo Horvat. That's the rumor. And it makes sense. When Bernier's in the lineup, you got Wenberg, Morgan Geeky, Yanni Gord is, eh, it's okay, but not great. He can also play the wing. So you could put Horvat when Bernier's in in the second line with Bjorkstrand and Torvenin. And you got a really solid team. And Seattle really does have a solid team. I don't know if you necessarily call them a cup contender. But, I mean, you can't deny the fact that they've overachieved this year and are doing great. So, that being said, it's going to cost you probably right. And I don't even know if Vancouver is going to be cool with that because they're looking for a defenseman. I wouldn't get more than right, but that's the rumor. Besides that, if you don't give up right, I don't see this deal being done. I just don't see Seattle having the defenseman that can get it done in their farm system or in their uh, prospect pool. <coughs> It's just, there's nothing here. Maybe there's a three-way trade that could happen. Now, I'll, I'll say this. I, I'm not against the idea of trading Shane Wright, to tell you the honest truth. He dropped in the draft. You picked him up. There's been rumors of attitude. If he's got some kind of attitude you're not really happy with or whatever the case may be, I don't know. And this is just rumors. Then I could see using him as a piece to bring in other pieces. So a three-way deal, bring in another team. Give Shane Wright to Vancouver, you get Horvat, maybe a little bit more, and then they use Shane Wright to get defensemen. And, and that might work. So I'll give it that. Tell me what you think, Seattle fans. Would you give up Wright for Horvat? Hmm. Subscribe to my channel and let me know. Detroit Red Wings. I love this play for them. Um, they've drafted a whole lot of players, but they haven't drafted all that many centermen. They're going to sign Larkin. Don't even think they're not going to. Eisman's just playing hardball. It's going to happen. Now, that being said, Andrew Kopp, who they signed for $5 million a year, as I said when they signed him, is not a second-line center. They need a second-line center. Like, really, really bad. Detroit doesn't really even have anything coming up that screams maybe Tate or Niederbach. How's he doing now? Oh, he's playing in the second league. No, nah, he's, he's a ways away. So if Detroit is wanting something now or sooner than later, I could see them doing this deal. The problem is they, uh, um, they don't have any defensemen that are immediately ready that they'd be willing to give up. 
However, if I'm Vancouver, William Volander would be something I would be very interested. I love this guy. I love his size. I love his range. So that would be the prospect. And they said they wanted two players. So how about Joseph Alino? And Gustav Lindstrom. So they get a defenseman, a prospect. How's he doing down there in the minors, by the way? He's not even playing in the minors. He's hurt right now. So Lindstrom, Felino, maybe Elmer Soderblom. And there's a lot of pieces they can trade here, is what I'm trying to tell you. And for a second line center like Horvat, you're gonna have to give up a lot. You're gonna have to give up a lot. I'm trying to, I'm trying not to trade one of the first round picks, but Detroit has a lot of pieces here. I would love my, if I'm them. I'm looking at Michael Rasmussen for the left side. They could use some help on the left side. Um, maybe Gustav Gustav Lindstrom, who keeps on getting scratched. Has upside and a first round pick in 2024. That's assuming that they are signed. I said 2024. No way I'm trading the 2023. Tell me if you're interested in that, Detroit fans. It's time to get a second line center that is real. Cop can play on the left side. You got Horvat and Perron. Bertuzzi, Lark, and Raymond, your top six is set. Just got to work on the defense still. Let these kids grow, and uh, this would help a lot. I, I would, you know, I'd seriously consider this deal. Next, Colorado Avalanche. This is what, remember I told you there was a team that was rumored, but it makes sense that they do it. This is the one. Colorado would definitely be interested in Horvat. You know, 27-year-old guy, he's going to need another contract in the $8 million range somewhere around there eventually, so they're going to have to work out their cap. But for now, he would fill the role in a big, bad way. So JT Comfer would be part of this deal. I like JT Comfer. I think Vancouver would be happy with that. Not straight across, though. It's going to cost you a 2023 first. Looking at this, either that or Bowen Byron. And I don't know. He's been injured so much. Vancouver would have to talk to the doctors and stuff like that. But they need defensemen. He's a, he's a left defenseman that they're needing. And they get a center to fill the role of Horvat spot. If he's willing to sign a contract, you might even have to give a, a draft pick on uh, the 2024 first. Confer, 2024 first protected, of course. You're not going to allow that to be a lottery pick. And Bowen Byron. If I'm Vancouver, I do that deal. If I'm Colorado, I seriously consider it. Since... Bowen Byram's hurt most of the time. Anyways, they've been winning without him, and they desperately need a second-line center. Now, if I can talk to the agent, work out a deal, even better. But tell me what you think, Colorado Avalanche fans. Would you do a deal like that? Subscribe to my channel and let me know. All right, next. The Carolina Hurricanes. And uh, you know what? Yeah, this actually is my favorite. The next one's not. Yes, for Kokaniemi is getting better every day. I like him. There's nothing wrong with that. But this team is set up to win right now. And I don't think I want to go into the playoffs with Kokaniemi as my second line center. Jordan Stahl will play more a role, more of a role. So they need defensemen. 
and they could use a, a center replacement. So what about Kokinian going back? He's got a long contract, but it's not that expensive. He's got a lot of upside, but you're going to need a defenseman too, and one that's somewhere ready to be ready to play. I don't... And that would be one of the prospects. Scott Morrow, Alexander Nikishkin, one of your big defensive prospects. Those are those two are very big. Um Kokaniemi. This is signed. If he's not signed, that's it. That's all you're giving up. Because that's a rental and you're not giving up more than that. If he if you are able to sign him, it's probably going to cost you a 2024 first on top of it. Go back in the video and look what Bo Horvat is all about and how he would look in your lineup. You're not giving nothing for him. And Vancouver sort of holds the cards here. They don't sort of. There's going to be a lot of teams looking for Horvat. They're going to have leverage. So they're going to be able to get a pretty good package, I'm sure. All right. Tell me what you think about that, Colorado fans. And finally, subscribe to my channel and let me know. Finally, Colorado Island, or sorry, Columbus Blue Jackets. I think this is the most likely team that's going to be interested in Horvat. I don't know if it's the most likely team that's going to have the pieces necessary. But this would definitely not be, of course, a rental. They're out of the playoffs. This would have to be contract in hand. And I think that there's a chance that they could get contract in hand. I don't know if Horvat wants to go to Columbus. I have no idea. Johnny Goudreau liked it there. They got Lion A. They got a lot of good pieces. He would get paid. They would be able to pay him. Um, he's going to be looking for $8 million a year. And you're like, we're all capped out. How could we pay him? Look at all the people you got coming off the books, man. You don't need to sign Jack Roslovich. You could trade him off. You could make him part of the deal. Gavrikov is not going to be signed. And I think he would be part of the deal. So you go Roslovich. Gavrikov, that gives him a center as a replacement. Gavrikov, assuming that they're able to sign Gavrikov. And a pick or a prospect. Maybe even Jake Bean. Because, I mean, he's not, let's face it, he's not that great. Igor Shinnikov. Something like that. But they're going to be looking for defensemen. So, Gavrikov signed. Jake Bean, yeah, you're going to have to sign defensemen in the offseason. But you're getting the big two-way center that every team needs that are rebuilding that you don't have. Let's face it, Columbus fans, you don't have it. It's not Roslovich. Boone Jenner is great, no doubt about that. I wouldn't call him a number one center, though. He should be playing in... in in the second line or the third. You got Cole Sillinger there. All of a sudden, you're stacked up the middle. And you got Horvat playing with Goudreau and Marshenko and Johnson with Sillinger and Lion A. You've got a top six that's pretty damn solid. And I don't think the Columbus Blue Jackets are wanting to like be five-year rebuild team. They can't afford it. That's the reason why they went out and got Goudreau. And they signed Lion A. They're looking to quickly build this team and go. <clears throat> and Horvat would help that. Subscribe to my channel on YouTube, Columbus Fans. And tell me what you think of that little package I put together. And for everybody else out there in the land, I'm going to be doing a lot more of these. You subscribe too. Subscribe to the channel, my friends. Hit the buttons. Make sure you hit the bell. So when I put in my next, and I'm going to be doing a shitload of these trade videos all the way up to the deadline. 
and you know you want to be part of it, right? So hit the subscribe, hit the bell. That's my full 42. Tell me what you think about all the trades I put out there. Have a great day.